to the media. But I did talk to Justin this week, and I told him we we're going to get him the ball. I said, you got to do something for me, and that's come out here and practice real hard and, and do the things you're supposed to do and study and be precise in your routes, and we're going to get you the ball. <laughs> oh, man. That's my favorite clip of the season. First of all, Mike Zimmer, he was asked about, hey, you guys got the ball to Justin Jefferson. You know, Kubiak said that was going to happen. You know, what, uh, what's the deal there? Uh, he shouldn't be telling the media that. <laughs> it needs to be a state secret that we're going to get the ball to one of yeah, the five yeah, best receivers in the NFL. Dude. The, uh, the defense <laughs> cannot know about uh, this hidden now. weapon that we fired drafted in that. the first round. He might be. Did Clint, can we check? Did Clint get fired this morning for telling the media? He's not going to get on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, he's being left in Los Angeles. But then he also says, hey, I went up to Jefferson, and I told him, we are going to get you the ball more. But, listen, if I'm going to scratch your back, you got to scratch mine. you got to work hard at practice. you got to run the right routes. Is Jefferson just walking around in flip-flops doing nothing at practice? It's like this, oh, it's a quid pro quo. That was amazing. Anyhow, all right, let's get our guy in here. Randy in Cottage Grove, he is the most passionate Vikings fan that we know. It's been a roller coaster season here so far. Uh, Randy, how are you feeling here today after the Vikings saved their season with a big win on the road yesterday? Uh, snug. Uh, very snug. Uh, uh, back to back to a lot of good uh, high, uh, high expectations and uh, – yeah. This is what we uh, we all knew was possible, you know. Uh, uh, by the way, you make fun of Zim, but it, practice matters. You don't just go out, you know. I don't just go out and mock on you know uh, Thursday night, first night of the draft. Put in a lot of time. Put in a lot of time, and 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 and, and uh, uh, Jefferson's no different. I don't care how good you are. You you got to run those routes. I agree. I, I mean, I, I question his work ethic in practice now after what Mike Zimmer just said. Yeah, you got to go work hard. Like, if you don't work hard, you're not going to get a football or cookies. You got to bust your <laughs> ass. And, and, well, uh, he did, and too, Zimmer Randy. Was, uh, he did. Yeah. So, are, are you okay? Because I, I feel like the, the way that last week came to an end, you, you were crying. I was worried about you. Like, there, there are people out there. Uh, who are also concerned? So, like, are are you just okay now? It's uh, look, I, I work. That's no secret in the a, uh, aftermath uh, of my uh, my split my, uh, with my former uh, hmm? the the wreck the wreckage of that uh, relationship. I f- did end up working with a therapist, and uh, I it's she she told me that don't run from emotion, Randy, and it. You got to lean into it. You got to let it out. Mm-hmm. I let it out. Let it fly when when I got it, and I had it last week, just like Dan Campbell had it a couple weeks before that, and and that's okay. Uh, the, the the number one thing is can can you can you channel it, and and they they did they they did a lot of good work this week, and uh, we look great. In in fact, uh, I see no reason why they can't you know we can't run the table. Am I wrong? Uh, I mean, I would, I would, I, would, I just want to see what happens against the Packers first next week because they're stiff. Uh, you know, they look pretty they good. Can't, they can't. They barely. They got a. They got a an offense that uh, sputters, and we got a defense getting hot at the right time. I, I'll tell. I'll go on on record right now. We're going to win that game by double digits. Wow! Wow! <laughs> double <laughs> digit win over the Packers. Double digit oh, win, and I'm. I'll, oh, I, I don't gamble uh, at the moment, but. Uh, if I if I was a betting guy, I'd take the the Vikes and the the over because the, the, we're going to throw it all over the place. What caused you to stop gambling? It's a bit of a uh, disagreement with a, one of the bookmakers. Oh boy! Oh, your bookie. We'll just put it, leave it, leave it at that. And uh, some states it's it's legal and it's not here yet, but it should be. Okay. Do you still have your two thumbs? Yeah, I was going to say you, you didn't get like beat up. Did you lose a toe? We took care of it like. Like men, and that's just leave it at that. Okay, that's fair. All right, All right. it's fair enough. A tough year, right. divorce. It's a, it's a, it's a. This is a, one of those years that you watch. We're gonna sneak, squeak into the playoffs. We're gonna make a run. This is the. You don't want to face this team in January. I, I mm-hmm. can just sense that coming. And you guys were all ready to, 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 to write the whole thing off 
you know, not not now. It I I never gave up hope. No. No, clearly. No, I don't think uh I don't think you did it all last week when you came on crying and literally calling for the family to sell the team, but uh, no. it, I, it was it processing. We're processing. Okay. And and I'm Stages we're back with the stud stable and that that's that's the best news of the of the, of the month for yeah. for a lot of people that I get to do the stable that we all love and 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 it's it's a treat. It's a privilege and an honor. And if you want to play the the music, sure. I'm looking forward and I'm positive. All right. Okay. That, I think that we can all agree on. The Stud Stable is back. This is Randy and Cottage Grove's Week Ten Stud Stable after a Vikings win over the Chargers. Randy. Well, uh, this is a great week. It started on Saturday uh, when I had some success with uh, Tinder. And it oh. continued on on Sunday with a great uh, another great outing, as as so to speak. And uh, this is the this is the result. It's a stud stable. Listen, I I hesitate uh, to ask this, but what does success on Tinder look like for you? Uh, the, it it was a good good outing, successful outing, uh, and and we'll leave it at that. I'm not a kiss and tell. Like it was like a but, quality quality start in baseball. Did, kind of a successful did you get down to the good, red zone a, and did you convert? Good, uh, there was a love connection, uh, uh, as they say, and uh, there were a for lot one, of connections in the game. If you'll excuse me, I'll get for get one back day to or for uh, like was the con- connection like like a quick slant pass and that's it, or was it like a, a lifetime connection? Yeah. Well, it's only been two days. Did you take the points or did you? Yeah, but I'm trying to fi- to fi- figure out if if like there's a second date here or if that was just one and done. I uh, not a kiss and tell, but I'll just say we're gonna we'll be having a a, a second uh, a second outing. Okay. Okay. Second okay. outing. Congratulations, with, uh, Randy. Sounds like a great weekend. Yeah, ga- uh, gal who I met on uh, it's a website Tinder. Uh-huh. That's, That's uh, yeah. Tinder dot com. That's a very successful outing. Colon uh, slash slash www dot Tinder dot com. So I'm looking up. I'm looking up. I'm snug for a lot of a lot of things, and right now I'm snug for some of these studs. Uh, leading off, a guy who really might have saved his own job, and that's uh, Clint Kubiak. Clint, you pulled a victory. Uh, not only a victory, but you pulled a, 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 a perhaps a season-changing philosophy out of some of that work you've been doing, and 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 it showed. Uh, you you got inventive. You got creative. You, you you put the ball in on, on uh, in the hands of the, the playmakers and Clint, just just go ahead and chin up because you're a stud. Yeah. Uh, another stud that I think it doesn't get a lot of do, but uh, he 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 played a little nice little role yesterday. A little bit of energy, a little bit of a couple of key blocks, and and he still has that flow. <laughs> he really does have that flow, and the and from what I hear, it's working out well for him and. With the ladies too, and that's uh, that's Tyler Conklin. Tyler, they call you Gr- uh, Gronklin. They can go ahead and uh, just shorten that to Gronk because you're better than him now, and you're a stud. So, so you said you said Gronk Gronk's having was there a was there a double date involved? How did how did you how did you know Gronklin's having success with people, the ladies just pe- like you are? Pe- yeah, pe- people talk. This is getting I'm oh. getting this is getting too uh, distracting me from the stable with these, I'm these steamy questions. Uh, now, now, next up, uh, Adam Thielen. A lot of people heard you bitching and squawking about uh, the week before. You know, you didn't quite make the headlines this week, but you put in a, a pretty good effort, and I think you're ready to just go ahead and, and, and power this team, you know, from a veteran standpoint, uh, in, into into the driver's seat uh, for the division. Adam Thielen, you're a stud. Here's a guy who uh, is this week's going to be the super stud. And uh, his, his, he's a gentleman by the name of Kirk Cousins. Mm. Kirk, you got a lot of doubters out there. A lot of people want, want to cut your ass week, week, week in, week out. Every other week might see him. But Kirk, once again, you, you you just you shut him up yesterday, and you you prove that you will do whatever it takes, and you're a super stud. Oh. And then the last guy here, he's a, a guy who. I'm gonna. This is the first time because there's been a lot of duds. This is now the super duper stud, and that's Justin Jefferson. Yeah, dude. Justin, we were snug at the bar. We were snug. We were snug uh, doing shots after the after 
so many of the big plays. And we even they even started giving us shots when you had a big first down. Justin, we, you you helped us cruise to a great Sunday. Uh, cruised into a, a bowl, league bowling last night with a healthy healthy head of steam. And and you you you're your playmaker. You know, Zim Zim may or may not be here in the future, but you you, you better stay in purple, Justin. You better not not pitch and squawk. You better look look at the opportunity in front of you here. And I think yesterday you got a little sniff of that. You got a little taste of that, and and you you hauled in some really tough catches in some tight windows, and and you tightened up some snugness around the bar for sure. And Justin, you are a super duper stud. There it is. That's the Randy in Cottage Grove Week Ten Stud Stable, and just like that, he's gone. Yeah. He just did, he never leaves us a chance to like know, ask questions. Just like go back and forth until he just wants to go. I guess. Go so. time. There it is, man. I'm still not 100% sure what snug means. He's never fully explained it. Do you it. need me to explain it to you? I don't know if I want you to explain it no, to me. No, you probably don't. That was <laughs> that was my point. That was my point. So, Cousins, so a week ago, he, he I believe, was crying, asked for the Wilfs to sell, said mm-hmm. Cousins should essentially be cut. He said and, Clint Kubiak is basically just has a job because of his dad, right? And, and fires and fires him, right? Yeah, and pretty much all of those guys were back now, in the stud stable except the Wilfs. And now it's going to be forty-two to twelve. They're going to be the Packers in the NFC Championship game, and then they will face the Buffalo Bills in the Super Bowl. The high. He did and say lows. they would run the table, right? Pretty mm-hmm. sure he just said they yes. were going to run the yeah, table. Yeah, that's a good point. We'll yep. I'm not. I'm not the quite high- like. I'm I'm happy with what happened yesterday. I'm not quite ready to go that far. We'll I see. feel like the hi- highs and lows for our guy are a little bit too much at times. Like his therapist should probably help him get yeah. to that that middle solid ground, mm-hmm. uh, not the one where you're crying after a Vikings loss or now no. promising Super Bowl. Find, finding balance. Find yes, balance, yes, balance. comfort. Yes, exactly. I'm just right. happy he's mm-hmm. having some success, whatever that means on uh, I, on Tinder. So. All right, uh, bonus statements. Let's fire back up your bonus statements. Judd Zolgad, go ahead. Okay, bonus statement from me. I'm actually, because I I can't help myself. I have to at least broach the topic of this game. It, of course, is the Gophers' loss to the Hawkeyes in Iowa City Saturday, okay? And here's my statement. And I believe that both of you gents will agree completely. My statement is this. Set the freaking tone. Fourth and goal at the Iowa 2 after a 15-play drive in the first quarter. You are absolutely gashing them with the run. Like, you're doing great. You're fourth and goal at the 2. It's Last time I checked the calendar, 2021. And you take the points. And you're, oh, conservative. We got to take the points. Let's, we're on the road. We got to take those points. <laughs> you show no faith in your run game, which is damn good. Your O-line was off to a great start and actually, from a run scheme standpoint, had a really good day. And then, at the end of the first half, same thing. You go conservative, P.J. Fluck. Honest to God. Like, like the, what the Vikings did on Sunday was so refreshing for a multitude of reasons, including what we watched Saturday. Set the tone when it's possible. You had a chance to smash them in the mouth. And instead, you're like, we, we just have to take the points, right? Honestly. I have so many gopher statements. Can I just rifle a couple of them off yeah. here? Just off of Absolutely, yeah. All right, I'm gonna, all right, this game's I, worth talking about. For sure, two of them. Um, imagine if the gophers had a quarterback that could throw accurately or run dynamically. I mean, both would be the holy grail, right? But very few programs have both, like a Lamar Jackson or somebody, right? So I just want one. Can you run dynamically and keep the defense off balance? And can you make basic, accurate throws when receivers are open? So that's my first statement. Imagine the Gophers with just a better quarterback. But then here's my next statement. Imagine not having your quarterback look at me, so to speak, at the sidelines five times before every single snap. Did you guys notice? I think it was in the fourth quarter. They had a they uh, they had a delay of game penalty yes, at one point thing. precisely because they kept, "Hey Tanner, check with us. Check with us yep. every 10 seconds, right?" Yep. So, instead of surveying the defense, and I get that it happens in college where you've got assistant coaches who have just had much more experience reading defenses and you're talking about in some cases 18, 19-year-old kids. I mean, Tanner Morgan's like what, 23? 
and he's been a starting mm-hmm. quarterback in college football for a half a decade now. He should be able to walk up to the line of scrimmage, survey a defense. Okay, let's let's start to see if I can pick out some tendencies here. You know, you know, read the defense himself. But he's not doing any of that. He's not making any of his own decisions. So it's not a shock that when the ball is snapped, he doesn't really like. He's not he's not improvising. He's just programmed to do what the coaches are telling him to do from the sidelines. And so in moments of crisis, how is he supposed to rise up? He's literally looking at the sidelines for direction every single snap. Drives me nuts. How do the Gophers, here's another one. How do the Gophers, more of a question, dominate the box score like they did? In fact, I saw this tweeted out by our friend Dave Campbell from the Associated Press. And it's one of, so the Gophers, they dominated yardage. um, They dominated time of possession. They had like 40 minutes time of possession. So the the Gophers had the ball for over 40 minutes without a turnover on Saturday. Yes. According to Sport Radar, only four FBS teams in the last five seasons have lost such a game. Arkansas at LSU in 2019, Tulane mm-hmm. versus Tulsa in earlier actually on uh, Tulane versus Tulsa on Saturday. Um the Gophers at Iowa and then Northern Illinois against Western Michigan, PJ's old school in 2020. So amazing, amazing that you still found a way to lose that game. One and seven now against Iowa and Wisconsin since PJ Fleck took over. How do you never learn though? Like how do you, why do we keep repeating the same gutless issues week after week? Seriously, like like it's gutless. You you are, your run game's working, you're at the two. Hey, do you're you think, at the two. Do you Smash think, them. I've been pretty hard on Tanner Morgan on Twitter during these games. Like mm-hmm. I will I will say his name on Twitter. I know he's a college kid. And I get some pushback from people that say, hey, like it's cowardly to go after to go after or to attack, quote unquote. No one's attacking anyone, but attack a college quarterback. Do you guys agree or disagree? Like, should I and like whoever, but should I stop no, I naming Tanner Morgan by no, name when I'm tweeting no. about the Gophers offensive futility? Rule of thumb, if you play your games on on national TV platforms, you're out there. You can also mm-hmm. make money now. Well, right. You can but, make you like, know, these guys are professionals if they're good enough went, and want to be. But if he went and played D three, I wouldn't watch him. I wouldn't care. And he could throw five picks. And but if he's if it's fun, man, you have fun out there. But when you play games that are potentially on ABC, you know Fox, ESPN, Big Ten Network, you're out there. You're, He's I mean, also I, like three years older than Anthony Edwards. But, we but I don't even care about that. NBA if players. I'm if I'm going to spend my time on my couch watching you play, mm-hmm. I have every right to criticize you. And if you don't like that, get off fair. that platform. Yeah, I think yeah, it's fair. I, mean, I think I, I don't. So I don't no, think we I'm, need I'm to be totally. as aggressive. Like if it's if it's an athlete making thirty million, if it's Andrew Wiggins, you know, three years ago. Oh sure, ago, but you've never done that. But like your tweets are never like that. Like no one's attacking him, but like exactly. when he's when he's as awful as he was on Saturday, yeah. you can't just not mention it. You can't criticize PJ without also mentioning Tanner. Sure, you know mm-hmm. they're and and there's got like Zach Anikstad. I mean, he was the starting quarterback three years ago. There's there's not yeah. somebody else that can complete a pass on third down to a wide open receiver. I don't know, man. And it's, it's not personal. personal. Like, like it's not like you're trying to. It's personal yeah, now. Rip okay. The after kid. the after that Iowa it's loss, football I'm personal. making it personal now. No, I agree with you. <laughs> I that. mean, you're not adding him. If you're like adding his Twitter handle, like you are a bum, Tanner Morgan. <laughs> that that is attacking. The best is and when, that is people that actually do do that. Yes, though. and the best the best though is the Stooges who take your tweets. Yeah. And, and then include the player yes. on Twitter uh, to be like, see what stooges. they're saying. That is yeah. a great way to look at it. Stooges, yes. And you're just a stooge. I agree. <laughs> Stop I being agree. a stooge. Uh, yeah. I have a statement from over the weekend. I, I had an action packed week. I had a concert on Friday. Um, I had to watch my nephews totally not hung over from that concert on Saturday afternoon. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a, a, a W on Saturday as well. Vikings on it was It was a packed weekend. It was an awesome weekend. Um, but from my weekend activities, I will say AEW is where it's at, and WWE is in serious trouble. Now, I know Judd is not the uh, wrestling nerd like Phil and Mackie and I are. When, um, we could probably talk for another 45 minutes on how awesome AEW and just professional wrestling is. But AEW is literally coming for WWE, and this is insane. Yesterday, uh, on Saturday at Target Center, packed house. It was a four-hour show, Oof. which actually kind of shocked me how long the show would run. I, I, I thought it would be like maybe a two-and-a-half, three-hour thing. No, that thing got out at... 
eleven thirty, and we were in our seats at six thirty. So I mean, it was a long, long show. Oh. Um, but it's awesome, man. They they've they've cultivated some former WWE guys like Chris Jericho and CM Punk, but then and they also got like obviously Brian Danielson. But they're now kind of growing their own people. Um, Adam Page, I think, is who won the AEW World Championship over Kenny Omega, who was the holder of it for almost a full calendar year. They put him over the top um, with with a big win on Saturday. It is awesome to see, dude. A lot of Eddie Guerrero tributes, too. I love that um, because Eddie Guerrero passed away in Minneapolis, a former WWE wrestler, 16 years ago to the date of Full Gear on Saturday. So there's a lot of love. For Eddie Guerrero, it was an awesome show, dude. And wrestling in person, like even if you don't, if you think wrestling is silly, like it's guys in tights uh, doing theatrics. Well, number one, uh, if if you have a problem with that, point out any television show, and I will say it's fake, just like this is, or scripted, I should say, just like this is. Uh, but it's awesome, man. It was a it was a sweet show. I'm a big AEW guy. I have I have not watched WWE since WrestleMania, and uh, actually, I think I watched oh, wow. SummerSlam, but that that was the only show I've watched since WrestleMania. AEW is absolutely the best wrestling organization in the world right now, 100%. All right, Judd, final statement from you? Mm, yes. Final statement com- comes from my uh, um, my watching of the Red Zone on Sunday. And my statement is, that's the final straw. If you ask me why I believe Rick Spielman should not be the GM of the Vikings past 2021, I will tell you I'm down to one name now. Mac Jones. Oh. Have you guys watched Mac Jones play? He's awesome. He's really Mac, good. Mac Jones, and, and look. He's not super dynamic, but he's just very, he's accurate, he's consistent. Yes, and he's, and he, yes, exactly. And, and but when I watch Mac Jones, Mac Jones is the definition of the type of QB that I want my, my GM and his scouting staff to identify. And, like, I don't, I didn't know, know that, but I shouldn't. It's your job. It's your job to have a really good, one of the most important, qualifications to have a radar on QBs. It's the most important position in sports. And you you traded back. And Darisaw might be great, and that's awesome. That's good. But Matt Jones looks like he's really good. And and that's a and that's a potential. I mean that is the definition of what I want my GM to say, no, he gets it. He's good and he's only going to improve. So how much of the Vikings because there was you know, there was reports that the Vikings tried to trade up for Fields in the first right. round. They did wind up taking Mon. So they went into the draft thinking, we're going to draft a young quarterback. Yes. I feel like they hedged. They hedged 100%. by waiting until the third round because, okay, well. Like, their goal wasn't. Yes. They went in saying, we're going to draft a quarterback because we know we need a quarterback of the future. But we don't really want to, like, put ourselves out there <laughs> for a first-round guy because then we could all get fired, right? That's what it yep. felt like to me. And how, mu- was, how much how much of the hedge was because they believe in Kirk Cousins, who's in his prime right now? The word was that they they tried to trade up for Fields before the Bears did, but their offers were not good. So like they there was somebody I don't know if it was the Wolves who said you know it'd be great to get a young QB to build around, and Rick's like okay I'll try I'll give you a sixth and a seventh for that, and they're like get lost. Um, but I mean that, Mac Jones looks to me to be the definition of the guy I want you to find. Like, if you're going to run my team, that's the one position I want you to be like, no, nope, this is. And and for him to fall, because, you know, if, if he had gone 10th, that's fine. But he he got to you, and you had traded back. Um, and I watched that, and I'm like, that guy looks like he's good. And, and here, he probably would, would have sat, which is fine. But if he's the type of guy who 2022 comes and you've traded Kirk, and you can plug in Mac Jones... Okay, now we're cooking. Yeah. Now, now, of course, Mac Jones also gets the benefit of working with some of the brightest football Agreed. coaches in the world. Yep. Now, the question becomes, too, though, if you had drafted Mac Jones and sat him, and he just sort of sat, and then 2022, you switch to an offensive coach who's got an offensive coaching staff who can develop Mac Jones, that might be a good starting point. There's also a chance we don't know anything about Kellen Mond yet. Right, I mean, he's been mm-hmm. practicing, it's but there's been protection. Yeah, basically. I don't like. No one yeah. has really written anything. I haven't. There's been no sightings. There have been no Kellerman sightings. He's not active on game day, which I don't know what to make of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact that Sean Mannion is the primary backup might say something still. We're halfway through the season, and Kellerman can't even be the you know the active yeah. on game day backup quarterback. But yeah, uh, I got I got one more for you guys here, real quick. I just we can do more on this maybe you know tomorrow or Wednesday, but. 
The only thing I'm sure about with the Minnesota Timberwolves is Anthony Edwards. So they go in and they beat, albeit a LeBron-less dinosaur Lakers team inside Staples Center the other night, whatever it was, Friday night. And they they ran away. I mean, they were up by 30-plus points, and they looked amazing. They were playing great basketball, getting everyone involved. And then the next night, they just don't even show up against the Clippers. And there's a couple video clips of Carl Anthony Towns just like, I mean, as as out of it and lazy as you can possibly be. I think the, o- the only thing that I'm sure about for the next three to five years is that I want Anthony Edwards to be the centerpiece of all of this. I'm not sure about Finch. I'm not sure about Cat. Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure about D'Lo. Like, D'Lo's a sixth man off the bench on a good team for some scoring punch. On this team, he's a key cog. Uh, but they, I don't know how much more we need to see to know that it's just not working at the level that you need it to be with Towns and D'Lo as your two main highest paid max players. I don't but know how Kat, much more. Did Cat just not do a thing? He just, I mean, I didn't watch the whole game, but like he just was yeah, sleepwalking was through the wild. entire first half. And they were down by like 27 points at halftime. And I get it's a back to back and it's the but end it's of a road same, trip. But it's the but same like, building. It's not like you had yeah, to get yeah. on a plane and travel and all yeah. that. Yeah, it was weird. weird. It it feels like, and they did this against the Bucks too, where like they'll beat a team on the road, like they'll have a big win, and then they're just kind of good for a while. All right, <laughs> and then they're gonna lose five, six games, and then all right, now it's time to focus again. It's like, no, dudes, you need to the Western Conference has two garbage teams. Everybody else can beat you on any given night. So show up. And the fact that Cat isn't leading that on a nightly basis, he's definitely a passenger. And so it's just like Anthony Edwards, whatever happens the next six to nine months, Anthony Edwards is about the only thing that I'm sure about. So. Yeah, I All believe right. uh, Cat and the Wolves are four-point underdogs against the Suns tonight, and the Suns are coming off a back-to-back. It's also Towns' birthday, so happy birthday. Happy birthday. To birthday. Towns. 26, 27 now? Mm, something like that. 26, I believe. Mm. Yep. Time to go. You're not 19 Still anymore. Time. You're 26 years old. It's time to uh, time to lead, time to set a tone every single night. Just like we do here, setting a tone every single every day. day on Mackie and Judd. Is that what Purple we do? Daily. Set a tone? I like Damn it. Damn right we do. I like we that. raise the bar like for expectations. Like we want championships. We're not just satisfied yes. with a win against a LeBron a, a LeBronless Lakers yeah, Chargers team. is just a start. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> Prove it again. All right, thanks to everyone who uh, – Made Ventline a joyous celebration yesterday, and um, we appreciate you guys for also subscribing to our two YouTube channels, Score North and Purple Daily. Tomorrow, who gets it, who doesn't? And we're working on something fun, too, Wolves-related for the show that I got partial confirmation on today. But um, we're going to have hopefully do a, a fun sort of bonus podcast with, we'll just say Wolves-related, and it should be awesome if we, yeah. if we mm-hmm. pull this off. So, all right. See you guys tomorrow. Mackie and Judd.